The following is a presentation of the Belly Up Sports Media Network. The Shohei Otani trades have been going rampant, at least the rumors have been, but now Shohei is off the market. We still want to hear from you. Where would you like to see Shohei Otani end up? And Bergeron retires. Patrice Bergeron, he is retired. And we're also going to have to talk about Jim Harbaugh getting suspended over buying a cheeseburger. Yes, you heard that right. And we're also going to talk about some big deals in the NFL. We've got a couple of guys that we want to talk about their big deals. And we're going to talk about a fantasy football that we're going to do, but with a little twist. It's going to be a little competition that we're going to have on this show. We want you guys to join in and talk to us about our new fantasy football. And also, we're going to go through some college football names, and Jeremy and Blake are going to have to decipher whether they are real names or fake names. All of this and much more today on Rising to the Occasion. What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Rising to the Occasion. We are so excited to have you here with us, and we are very excited to talk more sports. It's been a very hot, very rough week. It's been a long week, uh, and I'm glad that it's pretty much over. So anyways, let's let's get into it. But before we do, we've got to bring up our sponsors. First off, we are going to bring up our sponsors and the ones that we're powered by, and that is Mala Bros Golf. Guys, if you haven't already, you need to check out Mala Bros Golf because we all want to look good on the golf course, and that's very important, but sometimes it comes at the expense of feeling good. You don't feel as comfortable. Maybe you're too hot with these thick polos that come out for golfers, and whatever the case may be, you can look good and feel good on the golf course now with Mala Bros Golf Signature Polos. Go check them out. We're constantly adding new polos and designs, a lot of fun designs on there, very uh, loud designs, and some are very quiet, very sleek designs, good-looking designs on there, so you can go check them out. All kinds of amazing polos not only that but maybe sometimes you have troubles waking up in the morning and getting your day started off um, maybe you just need a little bit of a caffeine boost and get yourself going Mahler Bros Golf has you covered because Mahler Bros Golf came out with the first ever that we know of golf themed coffee uh, I'm not holding my favorite my favorite that I've tried so far out of the bags anyways is the Ace Blend there's a lot more that is going to be coming to the store soon so make sure to keep your eyes out for that Go over to MahlerBros.com and check it all out. The first ever, again, that we know of, golf-themed coffee. Uh, it's amazing stuff. It is all small-batched uh, coffee, which means that it's not these large batches that have a less consistent uh, taste and and, and uh, uh, roasting. So it's it's a roast that's going to bring to you. Uh, it's it's going to come to your doorstep, and it's going to show up, and it's going to be some of the best coffee you've ever had. So try it out. MahlerBros.com. You can check out everything from polos to t-shirts, hats, uh, and then even over to coffee. So there's all kinds of stuff that you can check out over there at MahlerBros.com. That's MahlerBros.com. That's M-A-H-L-E-R-B-R-O-S.com. And use code RISING2 for 10% off. That's R-I-S-I-N-G-T-O for 10% off. It's amazing stuff, guys. Go check them out. MahlerBros.com. I want to bring in both of my co-hosts for the evening. First, we've got the man, the myth, the legend from down in Alabama. We're still not really sure if he really exists. we got Blake. Blake, how you doing, man? <laughs> What's up, fellas? I'm glad to be here, uh, ready to talk a little sports with you. Absolutely. And we have also got my cohort that's also here in the office with me, co-host. Uh, we've got Jeremy Russell. How you doing, man? I'm a lot better now that I'm in an AC room instead of being outside where it's almost 102 degrees. <laughs> that's all I can say. I'm cool, I'm ready to talk some sports, and I'm ready to get to it. Yeah, it has been a hot one. I think we're not the only ones. I'm sure it's, I feel like there's been a heat wave that's been going across everywhere. So wherever you are, make sure that you are staying cool. Uh, it's been tough for some of us. Uh, I, I work outside, so it was not fun yeah. at all. But we're, we're here. We're in an air conditioning uh, place, and hopefully your AC is working. For goodness sakes, this is the worst time for it to be cutting out on you or something. So no uh, hopefully all is good. But hopefully you guys are staying all nice and cool and healthy. But guys, let's jump into it. We're going to start off with Shohei. Uh, first, for everyone watching, listening, make sure to go follow us on social media. We've got Facebook, Instagram, 
Twitter, uh, TikTok, all that kind of stuff. So go check us out over there, follow us, and also share some of our content. If you're watching this video, you need to be subscribed. So uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell so that you know when we are up and running. And of course, if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, make sure to give us a five-star review. But guys, we got to get into Shohei because first off, we were going to talk about this a couple of days ago when we weren't able to get in and, and do some recording. Uh, I've just had a very busy week, but we didn't get to get to uh, the Shohei trade rumors that were just going crazy. And now we get a new headline that says that the Angels take Shohei off the trade market and intend to make a postseason push. Very big for the organization, very big for the Angels to try to push for that postseason. But now Shohei is off the market. But we know that even though he's off the market and even though they want to try to keep him there, we know that he's going to end up somewhere else, right? So, I mean, what's yeah. where? where's some good places for him to go? Where would you guys like to see him go? I mean, Jeremy, do you have some some ideas of where you'd like to see Shohei end up? I know I li- I'd like to see him stay in the state of California. I'd like to see him honestly go, like, I know they mentioned talking about going with the Dodgers um, or even some. I'd even like to see him go, like, to the Tampa Bay Rays. Like, that would be a really good combination between Shohei and then what the Tampa Bay Rays have even become up onto this season and, like, those are the kind of like the two places. I'd love to see him go to the Minnesota Twins, but we all know that's <laughs> never going to happen. Um, if that were to happen, I think the I think the Minnesota Twins franchise would drop off the edge of the world, to say the least. But Yeah, I feel like Tampa Bay is almost a long shot, too, just because I feel like Tampa Bay is kind of known for being that low-budget team that still kind of sneaks in there and, and yeah. kind of makes makes their their yeah. noise you know they're, they've they've been really good this year yeah. uh, showing up a lot but they still have one of the lowest uh, you know salary caps among the whole league but Blake do you have some ideas of places you'd like to see show hair would you like to maybe see him just stick there in LA with the Dodgers uh, I, if he wants to stay out on the west coast fellas uh, I would like to see him go to the Seattle Mariners I like okay. that um, you know I know the Dodgers are the fan favorite. They're in the lead, as we can sit here and say, um, you know, everybody wants to play for the L.A. Dodgers, right? Yeah. Uh, and especially with him being right there in Japan and just how close it is and, and easy for his family to watch. Uh, if I had to go out to the East Coast, I would say, uh, obviously, you know, I would want him on the Yankees. Uh, I think the Mets could pull something off. Do I think they get it done? No, I don't think he ends up being a Met. Um, obviously, Boston, I think they're going to try to throw their name in the bucket. Um, I know a lot of people throw the Braves around. I just don't see AA going after uh, a, a guy that's going to cost $600 million. All right. Uh, the Braves could probably make the move, but I don't think that's AA style. And when I say uh, AA, I'm talking about the Braves general manager, um, Alex Anthopoulos. I, I don't think that's the way he rolls. And you just look at the Braves' this contract, like Ronald Acuna, 10 years, 100 million, you know, like uh, Ozzy Albies, like the same way, something similar with his contract. Austin Riley, you know, they, they get long lengthy contracts for you know just a little bit of money i don't know how they do it but they, they pull it off uh he he's a wizard at what he does so good for uh good for the braves you know they're the best team in the base in in baseball right now but as far as shohei man i could see him going to the rangers the rangers have a lot of they have a lot of movement they could they could make something happen i know they're trying to build something there but other than that uh i me personally, at the end of the day, when it comes down to it, I think he ends up on the Dodgers. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I, I like that. And yeah, and, and looking looking at Shohei, you you brought it up. He's a, he's a, a phenomenal player, and how he does it is just incredible. Unbelievable. Uh, I, I feel like, from from my opinion, I say he's the best all around baseball player in the game right now. Uh, I know a lot of people want to want to point over at Aaron Judge and say that, but I don't think Aaron Judge is the the best all around. I think he's the best hitter. I think he's a he's a great player, but there's a few other guys that get brought into the mix right now. I think Shohei's the best because a two way player is hard in any sport. But when you think of baseball and kind of how how dangerous dangerous it is to put your pitcher who's already wearing his body out throwing 90 miles an hour 
that's going to put a lot of strain on his shoulder. He does it and make, makes it look effortless, but at the same time, you're also putting him in the position where he could get hurt by getting hit by a pitch wrong. He could get hurt swinging the bat wrong. Uh, he could get mm-hmm. hurt when he's running bases, somebody steps on his ankle, whatever the case may be. You're putting him in a, in a position where it's kind of scary putting a guy out there two ways like that, especially when he means that much to your organization Definitely. as a pitcher. So, I mean, th- the fact that he's going out here and doing this, uh, you know, I. I, I've ne- I have never witnessed a player do it like this. Uh, and so personally, I yeah. feel like he is he is the greatest player in baseball right now. Easily. Uh, guys, you know, going into college baseball real quick, there was kind of a similar situation with Paul Skeens from yeah, LSU, absolutely. right? Definitely. He was a two-way player at Air Force. And when he come to LSU, he told Jay Johnson, he said, hey, you know, I want to hit a little bit. And Jay Johnson said, eh, I don't think we need to do that because – what if you get up in the box and you take a 98 mile an hour fastball exactly. off your elbow and you shatter your elbow? Uh, and then, you know, we don't have you pitching for the rest of the year, right? So uh, that could happen to Shohei, but it hasn't yet. And what he's doing right now is, in my opinion, the greatest performance in baseball history like he is the greatest player that i have ever seen in my lifetime i think he is the greatest player to ever play in major league baseball history yeah i don't um, i don't think anytime, it's far-fetched to say that any anytime you can do what he does on the mound and then come up to the plate hit 50 home runs uh you hit what what is he hitting right now around 280 probably something last, like that last I checked, uh, yeah 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 i mean and he's gonna hit you 50 home runs i the dude is – he's going to have close to 1,000 OPS. Uh, his his slugging percentage is going to be through the roof in the upper 500s. Like, I mean, he, he's just a dominant player. He is a dominant player, and it doesn't get any better. Uh, I yeah. think today what in game one they played a doubleheader. I uh-huh. think he, he, he threw like jacks. a one-hitter. or Yeah, he threw like a one-hitter and then turned around in game two and hit two home runs. Yeah, yeah, the dude's just absolutely Still insane. Different. I mean, it's it, it and it, yeah. what, that's what I'm saying too is that not not only is he just a, a two way player, he's great both ways. Mm-hmm. He's great as a pitcher, yeah. one of the best pitchers in the league, and one of the yeah. you know one of the better hitters, one of the more uh, yeah. I, I would say more consistent hitters. Maybe not he, maybe not the best hitter. You know, if you take up a lot of these guys that you could probably put up against him, but what what I'm saying is like looking at him him compared to a lot of hitters, he's going to be more consistent than the average hitter you put up on the plate. I'm sorry, fellas. I oh, just looked good? this up. Uh, he is up to 296 on the season. Dang. I knew he was wow. close to 300. Yeah, he's up to 296. Uh, he's got 112 hits and 374 at bats with 36 bombs and a 296 that's, batting average. That's insane. He's built different. Yeah, I mean, just a, a yeah. different guy. Whoever gets up. him is is absolutely lucky to have a player like that. And congrats yes. to, to the Angels being able to keep him around for the rest of the season. I'm not exactly sure. I haven't read a whole lot on the decision making there, whether it was him stepping in as well, or maybe they just said, "Hey, can we can we do something to keep you around for just a little bit longer? Keep you around." Uh, I, I don't know exactly what the case is, but the fact that they're able to keep him He's through gone. the end of the season it is good for the Angels for this season. At least you can maybe plan plan ahead of time and try to try to get a good game plan going in, into the having to get rid of him is it is it good though like at the end of the day is it good because you're not if you look, if you're you not going to get any yeah but they're not going to win nah, i don't think they are like well and, yeah, and the, honestly the, the like, al is too thick well and, and honestly it, you you brought it up and this wasn't really on the on the sheet to to talk about too but looking at since the all-star break there's so many more teams that are in the running so before the all-star break yeah. i would have said the angels got a shot I mean, they don't have a good shot, but I would have said they have a shot. Looking at it right now, there's too many teams that have a very good chance. Yeah, you know, just look yeah. over. So we, we, you just mentioned a minute ago, the Braves are the best team in baseball right now, Clear, Un- unde- yeah. undebatable. But the the Red yeah. Sox are putting it to them, and they are second to last in their own division. So I mean, that's mm-hmm. it's just insane to see how many teams and the Red Sox have been playing very good at the, after that break. Uh, and so, yep. to, and there's been quite a few other teams. I just bring that up as an example, just to see these teams that are playing so much better. Uh, and and again, we we keep on bringing up that entire division being over 500. It's just it's crazy to see. Um, but 
uh, yeah, I mean, ultimately, Shohei, I, I think it's, it is it is a win, I guess. I, I agree with you. I think it's a win if you can win. But will they? No, yeah. I, I wouldn't put my money on them. But I suppose there's always a chance. Um, they're, they're trying I, to make I a, just, a postseason push. I just look at it, and the reason I don't believe that he's really legitimately off the block yet is that if you keep him – you are going you're go, you're going to let him walk for nothing. Yeah. Because he's leaving he's leaving the Angels. He's gone. Like it's it's over. There's no turning coming uh, back. And and I just Yeah, yeah. So I I just can't imagine him not being traded and you trying to win. Like I I think he's gone and you're going to end up not getting a soul in return. Nothing. So I, I can agree. I don't know. I yeah, yeah, and I, again, like I said, I'm not super well uh, studied on on exactly what went into keeping him on the team. I just know that he's still sticking around. And yeah. hey, you know, good for you if you can make it work. That's that's really all I got to say. But ultimately, yeah. he's gone. Uh, I think he's definitely leaving after the season's over, yeah. regardless. And so we'll 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 see what it what it ends up to be. I think Shohei this entire year has been a big talking point on several levels because we thought. Uh, you know, with his contract extension and all this, and that doesn't happen, and what what could he get paid, what did he get paid, and then we move into just how good he's been playing and how much of a talking point that's been, and now all of the, the trade rumors that have been building up for close to a month now. It's been huge. And then now that he's off the trade market, and then now we have talk about, okay, he's off the trade market for now, but where's he going to go after this? Because he's not sticking around. Uh, and so he's he's been a huge yep. talking point. But guys, let's jump over from baseball into hockey. I know it's not hockey season; it's way too hot to even put any kind of ice up anywhere. Yeah. But you know we've got we've got some hockey news. Patrice Bergeron, uh, a Boston Bruins legend, played f- with them for nineteen, 19 seasons. seasons. Nineteen seasons mm-hmm. with the Bruins. So that was his career, an amazing career, uh, one of the best to have ever come through Boston, and an absolute legend. And he retires. Uh, now after 19 seasons with with the Boston Bruins, uh, Jeremy, I know you're you're a big hockey fan. We just now talked a lot about the Boston Bruins, the best regular season team to have ever done it. Uh, they were absolute garbage, um, to yeah. to say the least, when it came to losing to an eight seed in the first round. But still, Patrice Bergeron, an amazing legend. Sad to see him go. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, you look at Patrice Bergeron. What more can you really say? He's an unbelievable two-way player. Like, you look at his numbers, I think I had it pulled up here. Um, he still scored 427 goals and had over 1,000 points in his NHL career. And you you really can't say much more about that. Like, Patrice Bergeron, he took so much abuse in the NHL. And even when he was in the minors, he was just getting – pounded and pounded yeah. but like overall he of course he announced his retirement the day after his 38th birthday and i know he was really hard it was really hard for him to announce his retirement just because when he was a young kid i remember the interview and they asked him what did he want to be when he grew up he like a lot of kids he wanted to be a professional hockey player and that was mm. one dream that always was stuck to his mind when they asked him that he knew that was his goal that he wanted to become a professional NHL player. And it was one thing to become that, but get to have the C on your chest and play for the team that you wanted yeah. to play for. That's that makes it even better. Yeah. And it to go out get to go out. I know it's not the way he wanted to go out, of course, in the season and he opted out even last year to where he could retire last year, but he got a one year extension on his contract where he wanted to play one more year and then just Kind of see what he wanted to do, take it from there, and just see what how you feel. And if you want to keep going, we could potentially work a deal with you, and we can get you going. But all in all, after 19 seasons, I know my body would surely be <laughs> be ready to take a beat, get take some rest, excuse me, and have some mm-hmm. ice packs. And who knows? I mean, of course, you're not going to see Patrice Bergeron not go to the rink, of course. You're definitely going to still see his name. He'll still be brought up a lot. Uh, who knows? He might even become potentially a, another guy, a member in the booth. You yeah. never know. Yeah, yeah. I think it, it's it's exciting to see guys like that because even though they're leaving the game and not playing anymore, yeah, you're right. They they're, they might still be in the booth. They might be uh, kind of like what we what we see with uh, uh, Biz, Biz, you know, up up yeah. and you know still still there. And 
being a fun part of the game and having the experience to be able to say, hey, this is what I see as a former player that used to actually be down there in the position. It's always fun. Mm-hmm. Kind of the same with with Tony Romo. You know, I think he's he's kind of one of those guys that everyone loves to listen to break down the game because his football IQ is through the roof. He wasn't always the best player, but he had the IQ, and it's proving now. But That's true. Uh, Blake, I know you, you haven't always been the biggest of hockey fans, but any send-off notes to, to Patrice Bergeron for his 19th season now now closing it out? Yeah, look, like Jeremy said, right, uh, played his whole career with one team. That's really, in today's age of sports, it's, it's really unheard of, right? Uh, and, and for him to do that and just be the all-star that he was – um, and one of the greatest to ever do it, especially for, for that franchise. Uh, and, and he got his cup, right? He got a Stanley Cup. Mm-hmm, uh, yeah. So, you know, he, he's walking away with, um, you know, winning winning the big one. And they were supposed to win it this year. They were heavy favorites. It didn't work out like that. But a hell of a career. Uh, you know, professional athletes, they play that long. And – sometimes they uh, get into the media and there's some trouble and uh, there's some, you know, some stuff that gets on their name. And I just felt like this cat had a clean sheet, man. Uh, He had a, he had a, he had a great run in, in the profession that he chose. And like Jeremy said, with him growing up, wanting to be a professional hockey player and that's what he was. And and he did a fine job of of displaying that every night and uh, to the public and, and being a, being a hero to kids growing up who want to be professional hockey players like he once did. So uh, kudos to him. 19 years. Uh, I'm right there with y'all. Uh, give me some damn ice packs because uh, <laughs> I want to, I want to, I want to get on a beach somewhere and retire and, uh, and live it up. So uh, yeah, congrats to him. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. And if you guys want to help us out to get to that point where we can retire early, Make sure you're hitting that subscribe button so we can get Blake out on the beach and living his best life. Uh, that's the best yeah. way you can help us out. But, no, absolutely. And, and, you know, especially when we live in a day when we think of college football and how easy it is for kids to kind of uh, – I shouldn't say how easy it is, but how often we see kids transfer around. They can't even stick with a school for four years. And then you look in, over at, at the NHL and see a guy like Patrice Bergeron stick with the same team and have the commitment to, to buy in to that team for 19 years. Uh, that's that's amazing. Yep. I, I think that's a lot of fun. Really cool to see and everything too. So, yeah, yeah like you, I think you said it best. Uh, just hats off to you for a long career, and you ended it on a really good season too. It's not like you walked Absolutely. away and it was super disappointing season. The season was amazing. Uh, the postseason yeah. wasn't, but you know what? We can look past that for a legend like him, uh, and to know that he went out as one of the best. It happens. Yeah. It happens. Your body can handle so much. I mean, you're gonna. I want to know. I'm going to look this up. I want to know who the current oldest player is in the NHL. But yeah, was was he the oldest player before? I think so, but I'm going to I'm going to look. Yeah, look that up. And uh, while he's looking that up, I, I do want to know that now. But let's let's go ahead and jump over and talk about some NFL deals. It's the NFL off season. We're having very close, guys. We're very close to the NFL preseason uh, coming up. So I'm I'm excited just to see some kind of football. At least watch the first quarter to watch what's going on in the first quarter. I feel like that's kind of when you see a little bit of like a competitive scrimmage going on so you know let's let's go for it uh, and and at least we can get get rolling on some fantasy football and everything but let's first talk about one of the biggest ones Saquon Barkley was rumored to possibly not return with the Giants and this was kind of some rumors going around and I, I just didn't see him leaving the Giants uh, I, I didn't think that that was going to be the case but a lot of people were saying that he's going to leave and I I was kind of calling it no but uh it, it was possible. Did you get that? Yeah. It is Craig Anderson with the Buffalo Sabres okay. at 41 years of age. Dang. Okay. I'm surprised oh, wow. uh, Joe Thornton's not still in the league. Yeah. Line. I was surprised his name didn't pop up on here. But, <laughs> maybe I mean, maybe he, he finally retired. Beard. Maybe he maybe he's like always retired but just shows up on the ice or something. I mean, hey, they he they just probably <laughs> gave him the keys just to go to the back and yeah. just, just go sit in wherever you want and just go ahead and skate out with us. If you really yeah, want to like, play with uh, us tonight, stay, stay off the ice. We are oh, oh that's Joe. Well, yeah, just yeah. stay out because he's on the ice. I thought he was a janitor. <laughs> no, he's just he's he's our part time player. But jumping over to Saquon Barkley and seeing what he got, uh, a huge deal. And what what was amazing with it and what what everybody's talking about is the fact that he actually passes up a franchise deal to 
actually work out the deal that he's got now. So instead of working out a franchise tag, he works out to where he gets more money, but he's not giving given as much guaranteed money. Uh, and to look at this, so it says uh, $11 million cash value on Barkley's new contract ranks third among running backs in 2023, only behind Derrick Henry and Nick Chubb. So wow. he's the third highest paid in the, in, the, in the NFL right now, which I feel like is deserving. Well, we, we talked about it several times. Definitely. Saquon is back, and I feel like that's hey. true because, you know, looking at it, it, here we go. We got me me on the camera, so listen up, everybody. <laughs> Saquon is back. All right, just in case you missed that episode and didn't, didn't get to hear it, we want to let you know that Saquon is back. I really believe so. Looking at what he did last year, and this just proves my point. I think this makes me more confident in saying that because he passes up guaranteed money and says, no, I don't want that. I want to prove it to you. Mm-hmm. I want to prove to you that I'm worth it. I want to prove to you that I can do this still. I want to prove to you that I'm not injury prone anymore. I'm built different, all right? I'm, I'm back. Uh, and, and that's what I feel like he's saying with this. So he ends up working out a deal where he gets, uh, you know, quite a bit more money than what he would have. Uh, and so uh, it says here uh, he agreed to a one-year deal instead of playing on the on the $10 million uh, franchise tender. So he got a $2 million upfront sign-on bonus and a $1 million of, uh, available in incentives. Uh, and then pretty much he can reach up to $11 million. So he got paid quite a bit more when you think of the long-term of things. And... It's a one-year deal, so he can restructure it again next season and be like, hey, I want that franchise tag, but I think I proved to you this past season that I deserve a little more in that franchise tag. And I think this is the right way to do it rather than doing what we see with Le'Veon Bell or um, we can look over at uh, Antonio Brown did something very similar, uh, looking at what Lamar tried doing over there. And looking at, I think Zeke did this for a while where he, he sat out and then they said, well, all right, we'll see you. You know, and just looking at looking at backs and and really just players in general that have done this in the past and did it the wrong way. I think I feel like Saquon did did this the right way personally, because uh, he's putting his money on himself. Yeah, I don't have as much guaranteed, so if I get hurt, I'm, I'm screwing myself over some money. But I think I'm I, I think I can be more valuable to the team than what they thought I was. But uh, Blake, your thoughts on on them giving Saquon the bag and making sure that he stays with them? Um, in, if you didn't, I mean, to sh- blow the franchise up. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> because uh, Saquon's that dude, man, and and uh, I think him and I think him and Danny Dimes are are good together. I, I they need to. Uh, I don't know, dude. I'm pretty sure they picked up Eric Gray in the draft. Yeah, uh, he's did. he's basically just as good as Saquon. Right? No, I'm just kidding. Ah, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Saquon is uh, he's not from this planet. No. And uh, the no. the Giants better do whatever they got to do uh, to wrap him up and uh, and protect him. Uh, and they need to they need to get this thing going, man. It, it's time for the Giants to to take that step this year. Uh, I'm I'm happy for Saquon. You know him betting on himself. Um, you know I'm not a big fan of the franchise tag just because you're asking a guy to uh, play for one year and if he gets hurt, then it's just, you know, oh, well, kick you to the curb, hate it for you, you know. Like, I'm not big on that. Um, but, you know, he got he got his money, uh, show out this year, and, uh, you know, let the, let the chips fall where they may, right? So, yeah, good for Saquon, man. Yeah, yeah, very good for him to, to pick up a little extra money. And, uh, yeah, I agree with you. I'm not a huge fan on the franchise tag. I think there's some perks to it. But ultimately, I feel like uh, a lot of it kind of perks the, the organization more than anything in some ways. Yeah. So you know. I, yeah, I, it, it's it's trash for the player, and yeah. it's uh, it's all for the organization. And if you get hurt, they're just gonna look at you and say, huh, "That's why we didn't pay you." Yeah. So, Jeremy, what do you think about Saquon? I, I like the factor, but Saquon, I'm not gonna do it like you. Saquon is back, <laughs> and he's definitely gonna be shining. Like, everyone see him lifting the gym. That man is a freak in the gym. Yeah, he is. And, like, I know we mentioned this the other day. Just imagine this. If Saquon Barkley and um, Jalen Hurts were on the same team together, you know how those squat racks would be in trouble. Man, those, um, those, uh, they those, already are those, in trouble. Those squat bars would basically just be, like, permanently bent. Yeah, literally. I mean. <laughs> but, like, 
overall for Saquon, I'm excited to see what he's going to do for this upcoming season. And mm-hmm. going to the franchise tag, there's, of course, advantages and disadvantages to, this fr- to the franchise tag. But I more look at the disadvantage side. As you mentioned, Blake, if you get hurt or, or something little, well, see mm-hmm. you later. But, I mean, overall, I'm just ready to see what Saquon can do. And I'm ready to see him truck truck somebody over. Yeah, yeah I'm, yeah, I'm ready to see Saquon back in the league. And like you said, too, like I think this was absolutely necessary. You have to keep him on. You can't you can't be passing a, a, a talent like Saquon. I think he is one of I, – I would, I would venture to say I'd put him in my top five for sure. Uh, backs that I have ever witnessed. Um, you know, just looking at, at the way he runs the ball, his vision, his speed, everything about it. And, and look back at his Penn State days too. Oh, I think man. I think that that kind of goes along with it. Just how much of a, a danger he was in the backfield as uh, you know as a running back, but then also on the return. I mean, just oh, the, the dude is is unlike anything I've ever seen. But another man that's gotten paid is. Chargers quarterback Justin Herbert he agrees to a five-year deal worth 262 and a half million dollars a huge bag I like Justin Herbert a lot all right so I don't want to I don't want this to get misconstrued uh by, by the way I ask this but guys I think Justin Herbert is a very good quarterback I think he's very talented I'll start with you Blake like do you think Justin Herbert is worth the kind of money that they put into him yes all right Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Um, look, he, he, he come into a bad situation, all right? The, the Chargers were <laughs> – they haven't had a great head coach, right? And what yeah. and the situation that he come into, it wasn't a winning franchise. Like, when they did get into the playoffs, they couldn't win uh, back in the, what, the Schottenheimer days and all that. Like, it's just – it's not a winning franchise over there. Um, and and now they're in LA and they're having to compete with the Rams. The Rams have already won a Super Bowl uh, in there, so you're once again behind the eight ball, right? Like it's just not uh, a place that has been on the winning side of things. And Herbert went there during a bad time, and and um, you know they're not so well. I, I shouldn't say they're not so good now, but uh, when he got there, they weren't so great, and. Um, you know, it, it, they just got to keep putting pieces together, and mm-hmm. uh, they gotta, they gotta, they gotta juice up that defense a little bit, man. Like the, the Chargers Absolutely. go out there, and and Herbert and them, man, they put up thirty eight points in a game and lose forty two to thirty eight. You know, so like, um, other, other I do than, think long term. Uh, I mean, other than other than Pooh Bear back there, you know, we got Derwin James back there at safety. Other than that, I mean, they don't they don't really have <laughs> don't a whole really lot going. Um, they they got uh what's his name don't they um uh, they got the they do uh, have what's his name don't they have the Bosa kid oh yeah Nick yeah Bosa. I forgot they got Nick Bosa but I yeah. I kind of lost a lot of respect from him after seeing how he lost last year in the playoffs against the Jags I just I just kind of lost respect for him a little bit um, uh, not to say he's not a great he's got uh, Joey Bosa not Nick um, yeah. but yeah yeah Joey Bosa just phenomenal player um, but. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know if, it, they, if it's maybe coaching. I don't know. I'd have to kind of go back and look at the Chargers and kind of see what they got. But I know their defense just wasn't good. They weren't making big stops when it really mattered. No. I, I think his skill set, uh, Herbert's, is, yeah. you know, with the, what he can do with his feet. Uh, he's got a rocket for for an arm. Uh, I think long term you do have to pay him this because he is the face of your, your franchise. Yep. Uh, and if you put the right pieces around him, he he will win. He can win. Uh, and uh, you just got to put him, put him in a winning situation. Stop being a losing franchise. That's my thing with the Chargers is uh, it's clearly showed even when you move to L.A. You go to L.A., the Rams win the Super Bowl. And, uh, and once again, you're portrayed as the little brother. So, you know, you got to get that picture. Uh, you got to get that picture erased from everybody's memory. Yeah, and so here is a here is a stat I had to try to look for real quick. I knew I had it in here uh, where Herbert has thrown for ninety four career touchdowns, recording three consecutive seasons with at least twenty five passing touchdowns, putting his name alongside Hall of Famer Peyton Manning as the only quarterbacks to do so wow. uh, at the outset of their career. So, wow. uh, being as young as he is, he's only twenty five years old. I do think he's worth uh, you know making a franchise quarterback. I do think he's a great talent. I don't know if I'm ready to pay him this much right now. I think I work out a shorter deal and say, hey, 
work it out in the deal where hey you get paid more if you prove to me that you're worth it mm -hmm. um, because I want to I want to see it you know when we go further although I think I'm being too hard on him because looking at his head coach and seeing that Brandon Staley's still there I, I I don't have any faith in Staley I think he needs to go um, so I think he put them in really bad positions so Absolutely. with that said maybe he is worth this uh, I do think he's got the potential to be there though so I I, I, I'm kind of split between the two where, no, I don't think he's worth it yet, but I also think maybe he's just in the bad bad position where he could be worth it if he was in a better position. I don't know how to how to, to really look at that. Yeah. Overall, like you look at Justin Herbert, as you just said, he's up there with his name in the record books with Peyton Manning. How many people can really say that now? Oh, wait a minute. I forgot. Mm. Just them. Yeah. And as you mentioned, Blake, give him the right pieces of the puzzle. And he mm -hmm. don't get me wrong, he's already a good quarterback. He can be even more scary once he has the right piece of the puzzle come to come to them. And overall, this team could become a, a really big team to watch out for compared to getting pummeled forty two to thirty eight and still even having that kind of a score. I mean, you look at okay, yeah, it was a close game, but I mean you look at the inside things and you just see these guys just blowing simple tackles and not wrapping up and causing stupid little itty-bitty penalties and just all the little itty-bitty things. Like, you just need to stay smart, stay committed, know what you're doing, and just honestly just be better at times. Yeah. Just, like, you yeah. don't need to you don't need to showboat. You don't need to cause a big ruckus over, oh, you just blew somebody up. What do we do? Yeah, just look at them, pick them up. That's, this is what my high school defensive coach said. Blow them up, pick them up, and say, "I'm coming again." Don't outside of that. Just walk away. Yep. Just don't do anything dumb. If you if you start running your mouth, that's when you start getting really stupid. But overall, he can definitely become a good quarterback with the right pieces. Yeah, and he also uh, puts himself up there. Uh, so he passes for he's passed for fourteen thousand eighty nine yards, wow. uh, which passes Andrew Luck. Uh, for the most through a quarterback's first three NFL seasons. So, I mean, just just really big numbers. Uh, and then his 64 total QBR ranks fourth in the NFL since his rookie season in 2020. So looking at that and then also seeing that his record is 25 and 24, his stats show that he's not the reason why this team's losing. No. Uh, and, and going back to it, I think Brandon Staley, get him out of there. You want to know why they're losing? Uh, defensive ranking yardage uh, defense, all right? They were 20th in the league, all right? Tied for 21st in points allowed and finished 28th in yards allowed and dead last in yards per attempt allowed. Wow. There that's, you go. That's there crazy. Huge. Yeah, yeah, I knew they were bad, yeah. but I didn't know they were that bad because you're ranking in the bottom, bottom. tier of the league. Uh, just yep. terrible. But ultimately, I'm very happy for uh, – for Justin Herbert. Justin Herbert and everything that he's been able to, to accomplish up to this point and seeing the seeing the numbers I, I mean personally I'm never going to be mad when a guy can get paid uh, yeah, I, I get annoyed with how they try to get paid sometimes and I, it, it is what mm -hmm. it is though it's a business if you can get paid and the market's willing to pay you the money that that you're getting congrats to you because guess what I'm trying to do guess what he's trying to do guess what we're all trying to do we're all trying to get paid whatever it is we're trying to get paid so congrats to you for getting paid uh, I'm not going to hate on somebody for getting paid but do I, you know, where, where do I sit in this situation? It's kind of what we're bringing up. But ultimately, I'm, I'm happy that he's getting paid. I, I do think he's a franchise quarterback. I don't think you get rid of or let him leave. No. Uh, so, you know, I just, huge congrats to him. But guys, let's jump over to a couple of rapid fire things. But before we do, let's bring up another sponsor of ours. And that is Built Bar. Before, you know, you know we get into this rapid fire, because we've got some great things to bring up. Uh, I have to tell you guys about something that we all need, and it's energy. Uh, sometimes at the end of the day, you feel kind of worn down. Maybe throughout the middle of the day, you feel worn down, but you don't have the enough have enough energy to keep on going throughout the day. That's where Built Bars come into play. Built Bars aren't your typical protein bars, okay, guys? They are nutritious. nutritious. They're packed with all kinds of uh, protein. And guess what? The, mo the most amazing part about them is that they taste amazing. They taste absolutely great. Uh, they don't have the, the gritty kind of almost like a sandy texture that you get from some protein bars and stuff like that. And they've just got a never-ending 
array of different flavors you can choose from. So guys, you have got to go check out all of their their amazing their amazing uh, flavors and stuff that they've got. They've got something from caramel over to coconut. Uh, you can even get cookies and cream. Birthday uh, cake. So birthday cake, very good. I think we've had double chocolate and brownie batter. Uh, so just all kinds of amazing different flavors that you can get and they're all coated in 100 percent real chocolate so when you're working out whether you're hiking chasing after kids maybe you're podcasting i've had to do that before we jump on here hurry up and eat a built bar whatever the case may be maybe you're going over uh, and you're about to go tailgate and you need some energy to go tailgate pop in a, a built bar you can also get bite-sized ones which are amazing for just quick and on the on the run they're awesome just all kinds of stuff so we need to, you need to go check out Built Bar. You can check out Built.com. They're amazing. And for our loyal customers out there that want to go and check them out, you can visit Built.com and use our promo code RISING2, that's R-I-S-I-N-G-T-O, and get yourself 10% off. That's an amazing deal on amazing products. So guys, go check them out. Uh, it's Built Bar, whether it's your first Built Bar experience or you're a seasoned fan trying out a new flavor, trust me. With Built Bar, you can fuel yourself up and get yourself going to give yourself enough energy to get throughout the day. Amazing stuff. Go check them out. Unwrap your first Built Bar or your your next Brilliant. Built Bar, uh, whatever the case may be, whatever number it is. Go check them out. Let's get back to the action and get over to some rapid fire topics. Uh, we had a lot of stuff going down in the sports news today, so I had Jeremy mark down a couple of them. What was the first headline that we got? Jim Harbaugh and his four-game suspension. Jim Harbaugh. So everybody's kind of heard about Jim Harbaugh. The first thing that you see when you see a big name like Jim Harbaugh getting a, sus- a suspension is holy crap, what did he do? And like I said in the in the uh, little intro there, the little stinger, Jim Harbaugh gets suspended for buying a cheeseburger for a kid. Uh, and, and understanding this story, you know, he goes and basically just buys a meal for the kid. I'm trying to piece this together and understand how you can't, I mean, you are going on a business, you know, business trip sort of whenever you're doing these recruitings. So if, if I were to, if, you know, for, if I were an owner of a business and wanted to talk to somebody that I wanted to join and, and, you know, come and buy into my business, I'd probably take him out for a meal. You know, and I'm not going to make them pay for their meal. That's unprofessional. Yeah. Not only that, but you're also offering this kid to come to Michigan to play for you. And he's got the opportunity to make a million dollars. You know, they need and to buy back that you burger. buy him a cheeseburger and you get in trouble for that. Uh, and I think the, the big thing that that Harbaugh is getting in trouble for, I know, I know it's not that he bought the cheeseburger. It's that he lied about buying the cheeseburger he said he didn't recall what they were, what scenario they were talking about and sure maybe that was a lie but prove it i i just think the whole thing is being brought out of proportion i haven't seen anybody defend the ncaa yet but i mean blake do you do you like the ruling of of uh suspending him over buying the kid a cheeseburger and a couple of cheese curds no it's stupid okay uh, the NCAA is garbage. Like the NCAA, I thought David Cohn said it best on Crane and Company. Uh, never, never care about, about athletes. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. That is true. That's what it stands for. That that was perfect. And and shout out to David for for saying that and letting it be known because the NCAA is a joke. And Jim Harbaugh should not have to serve a four game suspension, in, in my opinion. So what Jeremy Pruitt did at Tennessee, putting money. In McDonald's bags, all right, that's different, okay? But in today's time, like you said, in the NIL times, like these kids are going to college, man, and they're making thousands and some even making millions. And, like, come on, man. I, a cheeseburger? Like, I, I, thank goodness we don't have a, a marquee matchup with Michigan and Penn State during this four-game suspension, all right? Well, and, and – Thank goodness you – know, uh, well, and, and also, just so everybody knows, it's not decided yet. It's in negotiations, which I think is ridiculous. I think the negoti- negotiation is, how about I buy you a te- cheeseburger to shove up your butt? Um, and then that'd be the end yeah, of the negotiation. Yeah. But absolutely so, ridiculous. So the, nego- so the negotiations of, of what games he'll miss, is that what you're no, saying? No, I think that I think the negotiations are just about kind of trying to understand what happened and negotiating uh, his suspension. I would think oh, it would be yeah, the yeah. first four games regardless, which should be cupcake games, but also David Cohn yeah. brought up, I don't 
want to think of any game as a cupcake game, you better not overlook somebody because guess what happened to them back when David was playing with them against Appalachian State yeah. in the big house. They got upset. So, you know, just, you know, uh, yeah, I mean, and we'll have David it's Cohen. Trash. We'll have David Cohn on, I guess, not live with us, but I was able to get get in with David Cohn and uh, record a little bit for us to listen to on this Saturday. So make sure to tune in on Saturday morning at 8.30 a.m. Uh, Central Time, 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time. Make sure to tune in live with us then, and we'll make sure to play that as well. Uh, Josh, to, I, wanna, I don't mean to interrupt you. I want to tell you who Michigan's four for, first four games are, and uh, I want to hear your guys' opinion. First game against East Carolina. Should be a blowout. Second game, UNLV. Better be a blowout. Third game, Bowling Green. Better be a big-time blowout. And fourth game is Rutgers. Better win significantly. If you're not winning four out of those four games, what the heck is going on? Well, and uh, do we remember when, was it Penny Hardaway? I'm trying to think of what basketball coach it was that they were basically telling him he's being suspended for something silly like this. And he just straight up told him no and just walked out there and did his thing anyways. <laughs> yeah. What is the NCAA going to do to Jim Harbaugh, keeping him out of the big house? Good but, luck. Yeah, absolutely ridiculous. I think we're not the only ones on that. But yeah. rapid fire next uh, on the rapid fire list there. I heard about this afternoon, and I really got scared. Joe Burrow going down, being carted off at practice with a no-contact injury. And I'm really hoping yeah. this isn't anything terribly bad. Yeah, and Blake, you said what it was earlier. Do you remember what that what the exact injury calf was? Strain? Yeah, it was a calf strain. Uh, I think uh, Rappaport. Okay. okay, that's that's yeah, good. Rappaport, Just a strain. Uh, tweeted it out. Yeah, and, and he'll be that, out a couple of weeks. And then, that that okay. could be that could be just from how hot it's been and you know not getting enough water. Who knows? Uh, so maybe maybe it was something very simple like that. We can we can hope for the best. Uh, when I saw that it was I'm something really to do with this leg. Man. That kind of made me nervous because we know he had the big leg injury yeah. mm-hmm. in the first year uh, in, in the league. So was that, that kind of same leg that was I think injured? it was because he had the the brace on the one he was limping on. That's what I thought. So you know, hearing that what really it is makes concerned. it a lot better to hear that. Uh, hopefully it's not too bad, which is funny if it is a yeah. hydration thing because he just signed a deal with Body Armor. So, <laughs> <laughs> Body <laughs> Armor, deliver to my house. Maybe that's, that's not such a that good sugar. look. <laughs> yeah, that is true. But, uh, no, I, I I wish I could work up a deal with Body Armor. I love Body Armor, no but uh, maybe that says something to him. Maybe that's a bad look on them, but maybe he's not drinking enough of it. Yeah. But rapid fire, what's in our next rapid fire? Colorado being approved for the Big 12. Yeah, so... This was some news. I don't know if it's officially official yet that they're going, but I know there was rumors that turned into the committee of the Big 12 saying that uh, they've approved for it. And so I don't know if it's something on the other end that needs to be approved back. I don't know how all these things work out in the deep end, but it sounds very official. Colorado going to the Big 12, I guess, going back to the Big 12. Um, So first off, I'll just say this. I know we mentioned this when we were giving our Big 12 preview. Uh, whenever we were talking about where the Big 12 is heading, uh, I think if Prime can get Colorado to where a lot of people expect them to get them, I think this is huge for the Big 12 to get them. And I think this is one of the teams I felt like needed to be brought back. So if Prime can really bring them up to where uh, a lot of people think they can, then here's what that looks like for the Big 12. I talked about UCF and Houston and how good it is for them to have that Power 5 stamp for now. That's huge for those two programs for the Big 12. And I think those two programs can help the Big 12 grow. You add Colorado in the mix if if Prime really gets them to that point. I think this could be very big. So kudos to the Big 12. Kudos mm-hmm. to Colorado for getting out of that dumpster fire over there that they call the Pac-12. Uh, <laughs> yes. I don't know what you want to call it anymore, but uh, it's, it's a good thing that you got out of there when you could. It's called the dumpster fire. Yeah, Blake? Yeah. Uh, but kudos to the the Big Twelve for uh, once again showing the Pac twelve that they were on their toes and uh, they were much more prepared than the Pac twelve was. The Big Twelve uh, reels Colorado back in and and gets them to to rejoin their conference when uh, obviously, like we've mentioned a thousand times, Oklahoma and Texas leaving for the SEC. Uh, Josh, I thought you made a great point. If Prime uh, can get Colorado to you know eight nine wins he's that's probably not going to happen this year but no uh, maybe yeah, next year when their Three. first year in the big 12 they get to seven eight nine wins like that that's another respectable program uh in that conference and then 
uh, you know, rumors with what is Oregon and Washington going to do? Are they going to go to the Big Ten or are they also going to go to the Big 12? If you get Oregon and Washington to the Big 12, then we're talking about a serious conference, all right? Definitely. Then I would sit here we've, and say, we've, okay. We've, we've, we've heard rumors of Arizona. I think Arizona or Arizona State are both. I think, yeah. Arizona I think State. both of them kind of. And then I also heard of Utah being in talks with the Big 12. So, I mean, if you really? can get some of those teams and poach them over, maybe if Oregon and Washington do go to the Big 10, that sucks. I, I, I would think that those are the two you really want right now. But if you could get mm-hmm. yourself, you know, Arizona and Arizona State, maybe, maybe a, a, definitely Utah, mm-hmm. You really keep yourself in the running. I think right now you're yep. putting yourself up with the ACC, but the ACC still got still got the the advantage if they can keep their their teams around. Because there's been talks of Florida State and I think Miami trying to work their way over to the SEC. Yeah. Um. So, I, you know, you, you gotta you gotta keep ahead of the game. But uh, did we have any more on rapid fire? We got one left. We got Sean Payton jabbing at Nathaniel Hackett. Yeah, a little Uh, bit of jab from Sean Payton saying how he felt that Nathaniel Hackett did a terrible job running that franchise into the ground. Uh, I like the the banter here and there, but uh, also be respectful to other coaches and you know I, I think I think being a little more respectful in that situation you know just maybe maybe making a, a you know a subtle jab in the sense that you know I felt like we had a lot to build on or something like that but Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure he mentioned names uh, and I can't all of that kind of stuff. So, uh, y'all I, ever I just, been to New Orleans? No. Yeah, yeah. I mean, no, I haven't been to New Orleans, I but I know where you're going with it in Louisiana. But I've never been to New okay. Orleans. Okay. All right. Hey, th- they don't care. Okay. <laughs> they, they do. They do not care. All right. Them Saints. Uh, you know, and 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 Sean Payton, man, he's got that attitude from down there. You know what I mean? Like, like he spent so much time down there in that in that French Quarter. Yeah, down uh, in New that Orleans. He's got that swagger. Yeah, got New Orleans. Orleans. Uh, <laughs> swagger. Yeah, he's got that. He's got that swagger about him, and and uh, and he'll let anything rip. You know, he'll let anything fly. So yeah, uh, you know, yeah. Ultimately, I I, res- I respect it. Ultimately, I look at it, I love the banter. You know, just kind of the same way that we saw with Kelsey and Chase yeah. a little bit. A little banter back and forth makes it fun in the off season. Creates a little bit of a little bit of a rivalry maybe there. So uh, you know, just thinking about you know with it, I, I think you're speaking a little too soon. You got you got to come out and prove yourself before you can speak. That's my only thing. You know, like if you want to sit there and bash him after you just won the Super Bowl, or even you even you walked away and and won your conference or something, you know, or even even getting up to the conference championship, even I think I could still give it to you there. Yeah. Making it to the Super Bowl for goodness, or to the to the playoffs for goodness sakes, I can probably give it to you then. Yeah, I'll take one but, step at a time here. Yeah, but you got you got to show us that you can win first, because you still got a big problem called Russell Wilson that I don't know what <laughs> went wrong with him, but something went wrong with him. So you you got a few a things to fix up. Wrong, but I, I have heard of what Hackett was doing there, and it sounds yeah. like. Not just Hackett, but a lot of the organization was maybe treating guys like Russell Wilson a little too good. Because I heard that Russell Wilson had his yeah. own office Seriously? and stuff. So I mean, like, Are you, you, you go upstairs if you're if you're a wide receiver and you want to talk to Russell Wilson, you got to go ask, "Hey, can I go up to can can I get into your office here?" I mean, that's just Come messed in. up. Uh, you should be one of the guys. Man. So maybe that's on Russell too, because he should have never accepted that position. But no. <laughs> nah, I, I like the I like the banter. I like what, what you bring up too, a little bit of that New Orleans no swag, as we would say in the North. Uh, so <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> but uh, uh, Peyton show no mercy. You said that's all we got on the rapid fire list. That is it. That's on the rapid fire list because there's a lot that happened, but we can only compress so much. Yeah, uh, guys, let's jump into our fantasy football happenings. So us, we won't make our our draft today. We'll plan it out and make sure that we're all prepared for our draft Mm -hmm. but what we're going to do and for all of our listeners we want you guys to chime in kind of help us out here we'll also put some polls out to see who you think is going to win we'll also kind of keep up with it throughout the season uh but right now i kind of want to get a feel for what we think for points and stuff and how to point how to mark this up so if you're listening right now make sure to go down in the comments and uh let us know what you think we should do maybe what we decide isn't good enough for you we want to hear you out uh, so we're going to do a head coach, NFL head coach, fantasy football. So what we'll do is we'll we'll have a random number generator. Uh, whoever ca- guesses the closest, the, the closest uh, they, they get to pick first. Uh, whoever guesses the next gets to pick second. And then we'll do a snake draft. 
All right, so this is how we're going to do it, and we're going to pick NFL head coaches. Now, this is all going to be manual. We're going to have to add up our own points and everything for this, so we're going to need a point system, obviously. Uh, since it's head coaches, you can't just do wins. I feel like that's not really quite fair, and also you might end up with a lot of ties. So what we're going to do is basically instead of going head-to-head, -head, it's just three of us, so instead of doing head-to-head -head or anything like that, uh, we're going to have it to where basically just at the end of the season, whoever ends up with the most points, or maybe we can, maybe we can, uh, we'll, we'll talk about that, but I think most we'll points, most points at the end of the season, I think kind of seems fair to me anyways. Um, but I want to kind of hear, hear you guys out and try to get this. So I think first off is points for a win. How many points do we want to get, give uh, a head coach for notching out a win? Any, any ideas, any recommendations for you two? Um, a win. So I would I'll, say I'll, I'll read off all the categories so we can kind of gauge how much okay. how much one means compared to the others. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so the the categories I've got. Uh, let's see, we've got four categories. So we've got points for a win, points for a win by ten plus, points for a shutout, uh, and we'll have to kind of determine. Oh yeah, I guess points for a shutout was it was you know just. If you beat somebody and they get zero on the board, um, but then we'll have to, I figure out for the underdog win, uh, so points for a win, points for a win by 10 plus, points for a shutout, and then points for an underdog win, which is anytime you're an underdog of five points or more. So we're, we're going to need a point system for each of those. So we'll start off with points for a win. Points for a win, I would say like, I don't know, points for a win, I'd say like four. Four? four? I like that. You I was okay thinking four or five, maybe. Because I feel like that kind of sets the tone then because now points for a win yeah. by 10 plus, I feel like that carries a little more weight. That should be more points, right? Yeah. So what do we yes. think? Maybe add another? I another maybe eight. Or... Double it up? Yeah, I would double it up. I was going to say eight as well. Okay. Yeah, I like that. So we're going to double it up. And, and again, you guys can throw out some, if you guys got something in the comments too, to let us know. I'd love to hear it. Um, and, you know, maybe, maybe we'll implement some of your rule changes as well. But now points for a shutout, does, does that carry more weight than even a, a 10 plus? Or does that, is that maybe equal or? I'd say almost. I think equal. it carries. Yeah, I, I think it carries just a little bit more. So maybe bump it up to ten uh, because obviously a shutout in the NFL like that's ridiculous, you know. Sure. Yeah, um, and it's like super rare. Um, so sh should we so maybe? Yeah, do that? I would. Bump, like, I would bump it up to 10. Yeah. 10, 10 or twelve. I can't remember the last time I thought yeah. an NFL shutout. Can you? Can you, Blake? Not off the top uh, of my not head. Not off the top of my head. Yeah, same. Yeah, I'd have to. I'd have to really look at it because yeah. thinking about like big wins. Yeah, I've, I've seen some ten plus. Yeah, would, do we do we want to bump it to twelve? Maybe. Because that is pretty rare. I'm not, I'm not. Yeah, let's bump it to 12. You can do that. All right, let's make it 12. Because, I mean, honestly, you could win by 10 plus and shut them out. You could win like, you know, 14 to 0, 17 to 0, something like that, and get, you know, uh, 20 points right there. Yeah. So, and, you know, and then plus you won, so you get four points on top of that. Um, how much for an underdog win? So we're talking five points or more of an underdog. How much? I, I, I don't think that's as much as 10 plus. Um, so I feel like it may be a little less, but it's better than a win. So maybe go right in the middle, six. say six, right in the middle. Yeah. yeah. All right, sweet. So we pretty much got our systems here. So anytime you win, you automatically get four points. Uh, and that's for each of your, your head coaches that you have mm -hmm. on your roster. We're going to each uh, pick. That was another thing, too. Each of us pick five head coaches. That sound fair? Yeah. So we've got 15 out of 32 so we'll each yep. pick five, and like I said, it'll be a snake draft. We'll have a random number generator. Closest gets the first pick, uh, and we'll plan on this maybe next week's uh, episode somewhere, maybe next Thursday's episode or something like that. Uh, we'll let everybody know. Make sure to post a graphic whenever we get ready for it, and then also have another one showing our teams, uh, and then we'll kind of keep this updated throughout the season as well. Sweet. Uh, so we'll have four points for a win, eight points for a win by 10 or more, uh, 12 for a shutout, and six for an underdog win, which is five points or more. So yeah, I like that system a lot. Uh, I think it'll be quite a bit of fun. So we'll, you know, we'll, we'll kind of just go through and make our picks for what coaches we want. Hopefully, we get the coaches that that we like, and uh, we'll kind of take it off from there. And then, like I said, we'll kind of keep everybody updated week to week as we go through that on our head coach fantasy football. I'm very excited for it. Uh, I was I was trying to think of some fun things we can do with the the uh, football season coming up upon us. 
Uh, and I think I think this is one way for us to definitely have a little bit of fun. There was four shutouts last year. In four Orlando. shutouts. There you go. I mean, yep. I, I feel like that's pretty fair then to mark that up there that high. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because I mean, four shutouts out of how many games? <laughs> you know, so it's, <laughs> yeah. what is that? Seventeen games by thirty-two teams. Uh, that's a lot, and only four of more shutouts. That's so crazy. Very mm-hmm. rare. Uh, maybe this year we all of a sudden have like eighty-four shutouts, but just defense is just rocking <laughs> Man, this that's year. A you know, big number. <laughs> all of a sudden the Chargers have the best defense in the league. No. Um, mm. All right, guys, this is our last Calm segment there, for the day. Cheater. It's called Real or Fake. I'm going to go through a list of fake names and real names of college football players, but I'm not going to tell you which one it is. You guys are going to have to guess whether it's a real name or a fake name. Okay. It sounds really easy, right? But yeah. I have a suspicion that maybe you guys are going to maybe guess wrong on a couple of these. Okay. So we'll start off with the very first one, Pancake Patinsky. That's a what? real name. That's, That's a real name. Be a real name. That's a real. Yeah, yeah. All right, that one. I've tricked you guys already because that was a fake one. Are you serious? That was a fake name. Really? That was Pancake? a fake name. Oh, that but so Pancake Patinsky. But yeah, that like, was a fake one. I've I mean, heard of some see, interesting so names. I was but... I was making these fake names up too, so I'm glad I was able to trick you guys right off the bat. But let's tr- move on to the second one. We got General Booty. Oh yeah, I know he's real. Yeah, <laughs> General Booty. He's quarterback from the best uh college in college football oklahoma oh um, brother <laughs> just because this man gets a new pickup oklahoma color now he's got a big <laughs> head man here we go all right we've got uh javinsky schlenbaker real i like that it's making you think D- yeah Javinsky? i'm gonna say real i'm gonna say real schlenbaker Real? All right, yeah, you guys both yeah. got that yeah, real. Okay. Right, we got real. All right, Hulk Huddlehaas. Hulk Huddlehaas? I'm going for real. I'm going with fake. You're going fake? You're going real? This yeah. is the first time yeah. we got a split, and that one is fake. Okay. But I'm Let's glad go. that I'm I'm glad that I'm glad making up names that sound like if it's a outrageous name, you know, that kind of sounds like it could be real. I mean... <laughs> But yeah, I, I mean it's, it's it's funny. We'll we'll get to, we'll, we'll get to some others that are, are pretty funny through here too. But oh we got Jaeger Bull, Jaeger Bull. I know Jaeger Bomb, not Jaeger Bull. Um, <laughs> Jaeger Bull. Um, uh, fake. I'm gonna just fake. You're, you're going fake. I'll go real. Yeah. Why not? We're splitting it up. Jeremy got that one right. We really? Got, it's a real name. Yeah. He is a tight end from Wake Forest, Jaeger Bull. Oh, no wonder no wow. one's him. He's at Wake Forest. It's spelled like Jaeger Bomb, too, you know, like Jaeger. J A E G E R. Let's move on to the next next one Boogie Knight. That's Boogie Knight. Boogie Knight. I won't say he- real. Yeah, I'm going to say real. Does he boogie into the night? He does boogie into the night as a wide receiver from ULM. So we got another one. Uh, the next one is Dakotas Crawford. Real. Oh, I know he's real. Yep. Dra- he's transferred from Louisiana. Over to, yep. Transferred over to Colorado. Was that Nebraska? Uh, the next one we got Grizzly Goalpost. What? No shot. No way. No, no shot. No, no shot. Way. Oh, <laughs> both picking fake? Yeah. Blake saying fake. I'll go with real. We'll it is a fake name. Okay. So. <laughs> I was going to yeah. say, no way, but you can never know with these names. All right, we got Turk Tumbletree. That just sounds super real. Yeah. Turk Tumbletree. What We're a both name. Picking re- both picking like real? It. I'm going fake. You're going fake? Yeah. All right, and Blake's picking real? Yeah. It is a nice name, isn't it? And it's fake. Turk Tumbletree is a if fake that was name. a real name, I'm going <laughs> to I want to know the Tumbletrees. <laughs> All right, we got QB Quick. It's Q U E B E E. So Q I, I think that's how you pronounce it. QB Quick. No way. But the last name is Q U I C H E. So maybe I'm pronouncing that one wrong too. No way. But it looks like QB Quick. That's a real name. No way. It's a real name. You're saying fake? Yeah. Jeremy's right again. It's another fake name. Ah, let's go. <laughs> Hit you guys with a couple of fake ones there in a row. But uh, we've also got Panda Askew. I'm going to go with real. You're going with real on this one? Yeah. Right. yeah. Panda Askew. Yeah, going yeah, real? Go All right. And you're both right. Panda Askew is an offensive lineman from Charlotte. 
thought it was going to be from that. Hawaii or something. All right. How about Shitasilla? No way. What? Shitasilla. <laughs> Just so YouTube understands, what? I'm not cursing. I'm saying a real or fake name. <laughs> Shitasilla. No way. Uh, no chance. Yeah, get out of it. That's not a real name. This is a That's... real name. It is a defensive linebacker. Are you kidding or, me? Uh, sorry, a defensive lineman from Boston College. <laughs> Shitta Silla, oh, it's S-H-I-T-T-A, they... is his first name. Last name is Silla, S-I-L-L-A. No disrespect, but were they drunk when they wrote the pa- <laughs> on the paper? You know what? I love it. I, I, I love the fun names here. I got to look this guy up. Um, next one is Fish McWilliams. Real. Yeah, You're going real? real. Fish McWilliams. Yeah, I, I want to say that guy on that. McWilliams just sounds real. <laughs> I, I think I yeah. saw him on Cartoon Network. Um, that is a real one. It is the defensive lineman from UAB. Uh, uh, next one we've got. See him <laughs> hey, fish. <laughs> next one we've got Hot Rod Fitton. Fake. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Hot Rod Fitton. That just sounds super. Give me real. Give yeah, me real. He, it's real. Uh, he's Are a linebacker serious? from South Carolina. Oh my. Uh, we got a, We got go. the SEC what boy. Is this? I, I figured he would guess that one because he's in the SEC. What is this? Uh, next, we got Gridiron Chase. Gridiron Chase. No shot. No shot. Somebody no named shot? their kid Gridiron. I'm going to go real. Somebody really I mean, named their kid Gridiron. We got, got people naming their, their kid the coldest and boogie and, yeah. <laughs> you know, general. General Booty. No shot, Gridiron. Please, no shot. I'm going to go with that, real. That one's Please. a fake name. Thank so the good Lord. job. <laughs> yeah. Thank the Lord. All right. How about Storm Duck? Real. He's going real right off the bat. Storm Duck. I'm storming ducks. I'm going to go real. Country. Yeah, I'm going to go real. real. He is a DB from North Carolina. Oh, he needs to play for Oregon. Love that. How about Jordy Yeti? Jordy Yeti. I'm going to say not real. I'm going to say real. It is not real. Okay. So Blake's got that one. Uh, I, we're not even keeping track of score or nothing. But no. how about Ephesians Prysock? What? Ephesians Prysock. Can you use that in a sentence, please? Uh, Ephesians Prysock is taking the field. What's the origin? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Can you use it in a different uh, sentence, I'm gonna say, please? I'm gonna say, yeah, I'm going to say real. You're going to say real? I'll say real, too. It is a real man. DB from Arizona. Oh, my. Ephesians Prysock. Oh I, I'm, I'm seeing some of these names. Oh, so my. I got a lot of these. Just so you guys know, I got a lot of these from 247 Sports put together an uh, All-American Names team. Uh, and so then I started making up some names to kind of throw in it. Uh, next one is Jitterbug Hughes. Real. Going real? Oh, that sounds so real. Give me real. <laughs> it's sad that we're looking through these and like, yep, that's real. That one is a fake name. Oh my gosh. Oh, this is rigged. How about Danico Man, Slaughter? Jitterbug. <laughs> what is that? Danico Slaughter. Real. Yeah, that, that sounds real. Yep, DB from Tennessee. Sounds like he probably is a I was say, good old rock. Okay, yeah. Baby. I was going to say linebacker. Linebacker, yeah. It does. It does. Him. It sounds like. A, I feel like there was a linebacker that played at K State with the last name Slaughter. I I, th- I think yeah. I think I remember I know that. Sergeant Slaughter, but I don't know him. <laughs> How about Kool Aid McKinstry? Oh yeah, Alabama. Yep, Top yep, pit. yep, yep. DB from Alabama. Real, nothing disrespectful. Does he like Kool Aid? <laughs> so how about <laughs> Nacho Player? No, get no. out of here. <laughs> Nobody named their kid There's Nacho. There's the door. See ya. <laughs> All right, you guys both got that one right. And how about Steel Fortress? <laughs> Real. I'm going to say absolutely real. It is real. And what's crazy is he is a QB from Michigan Tech. Are you serious? Steel Fortune. What a, what a, wow. the best name, best name for, you know, yeah. one of the, one of the top five ever names ever created. Um, I, I always, I always liked Divine Ozigbo from, from Nebraska. I always loved his name. Yeah. Like Divine. You know, man, that's a sweet name. But that's pretty much it, guys. But I figured we'd have a little bit of fun with that. I'm I'm glad oh, I was man. able to kind of come up with some names that sounded like, yeah, Jitterbug's real. Yo, oh, Jitterbug, man. get over here. Yeah. But, hey, JB. And what's funny is I feel like Blake was picking a lot of the fake ones to be real because he's like, well, I'm from the South. I heard I heard people with nickname this and stuff. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> Blake yeah. definitely has the advantage. He's definitely heard some of that he says, slang. He says, yeah. Fish McWilliams. Yeah, that one's definitely real. <laughs> what if he doesn't like fish? No, no. 
<laughs> nah, I'm just looking at yeah, some of these names. Fish. I always thought, I hope so. <laughs> I always thought General Booty was one of the craziest names, but then I saw some of these names that were on this list, and man, parents yes. are naming their kids right. I man. mean, way to go. I mean, man. hats off to you. Uh, you know, my my dad always wanted to name me Rock Solid, uh, and whenever I was born, he knew it fit, but my mom wouldn't let him. So. Uh, it, it still stays and stands true today of who I really am. But, oh, man. Uh, that, that, true, story, true story. True story. You can ask we him. Uh, we'll, we'll get him on the, on the pod sometime to, oh to tell him gosh. what, what yeah. he really wanted to name me. But, guys, that's pretty much all we got for today. Uh, for everybody watching on YouTube, we thank you so much. Even if you're listening, we thank you so much for, for tuning in. If you're watching on YouTube, though, make sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and go ahead and share it. Share it with a friend, family, uh, whoever you think might enjoy this episode. And if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, we just want you to do one really quick thing, and that is write a five-star review for us. If you're watching, or if you're listening on Apple Podcast or Spotify, a five-star review goes a long ways for us. It helps us grow tremendously. We've been growing a lot lately, and it's a huge thanks to you guys for tuning in, for sharing this stuff. Whatever it is that you're doing, you're doing an amazing job at it, so keep it going. But, guys, we thank you all so much for all the love and support. Stay real, San Diego. <laughs>